Good morning, y'all. Today we are going to start some of our crock pot recipes. Um, this one's also new. This week we are going to be doing a few new ones that I have never tried before. Um, I thought this would be a good thing to do. Today I'm doing uh, beef tips and gravy. I have about a cup and a half of chopped onion with three pats of butter sauteing. I have two pounds of beef tips right here and I'm going to add that to my crock pot. So I forgot to show y'all what my onion looked like, if you can kind of see it over here. Um, it's just starting to caramelize, and this recipe does not call for onion. Um, it calls for a packet of the French onion soup, and I did not have any of that, so I'm kind of making my own rendition of it. Um, the recipe to make your own is a quarter cup of dried onion flakes, two tablespoons of beef bouillon granules, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of parsley, a eighth of a teaspoon of, well, it's just right here, of pep paprika, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. So I just replaced the onion flakes with fresh onion. Now this recipe shows the seasonings, the pepper, the thyme. I already have my garlic minced. I don't have that, so we're going to make our own. I have my beef, my beef broth ready, I have ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and the cornstarch, it says to put that all in at once. I'm not going to put the cornstarch in until the end. So I'm going to go ahead and season my meat with my own seasonings, and then I'm going to make my mixture of the rest of these ingredients. So I have Cavenders, if y'all watch me and subscribed, y'all know that's my favorite and then my zesty western that's my other favorite for seasoning any kind of beef get this stirred in I don't know why it keeps blurring okay now we're going to mix the rest of our ingredients I have my beef broth here, so I'm going to add my minced garlic. I added my dried beef bouillon to my meat. Um, I'm just supposed to mix all of that together with this anyways. so. Why not? A quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of parsley, an eighth of a teaspoon of celery, an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. I have about three tablespoons of ketchup and about one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Mix all of that together and then just pour it over your beef tips. Now I'm going to slow cook it on low for six and a half to seven hours. All right, y'all, our um, beef tips, I want to say beef stew because that's kind of more or less what it turned out to be. Um, it is ready. It is pretty good, but I'm probably not going to make this recipe again because it is more like a beef stew. I was looking for a beef tips and gravy. Um, I will still post the recipe down below. But I just wanted to give y'all my, my opinion on it. I would show y'all the end result. But before I could do this video, everybody dug into it. And my mom took plates over to my grandparents' house. And my husband ate his dinner. My child ate. And so I've been waiting to try my bite um, to show you guys. So let's test it. Mm. For beef tips, the meat is pretty tender, but I think it's because it cooked six and a half hours, but yeah, I'm not too crazy about it. Um, I'm just going to have to make a different beef tips and gravy recipe, um, but 
everybody else liked it. So that's all that matters, right? Um, I'm going to get going, y'all. i got to give her a bath and get everybody ready for bed. Um, tomorrow, we're going to try a different new recipe. So I'll see y'all then. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be roasting some spaghetti squash and making a gratin. Um, I know earlier I said that this was going to be a bunch of crock pot meals. Plans have changed. Um, we're going to get started on this. All right, y'all, I have my three spaghetti squash right here. They have all been washed off. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And I'm just going to cut these in half, if I can. There we go. And if y'all have never used a spaghetti squash, it's what they look like on the inside. I'm going to take a spoon and just scoop all of that out. And that is what they will look like when they're totally cleaned out. So I was going to show you guys, the seeds are starting to sprout. Look at that. And you could actually plant those, but unfortunately here, it's not, they're not going to have enough time to grow. Well, we are going to compost these. The deer will probably eat them, whatever wildlife. Birds, skunks, squirrels, whatever. They'll enjoy that. I've got all of these sliced in half. I've got them all cleaned out. See if I can fit them all inside on this pan. I think I can. All right, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil right over the top of these. Okay. And I'm going to get my basting brush and just kind of evenly distribute that. them all nice and coated. So I had some problems. Sorry about that. I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on these. I got my basting brush and got it all evened out. You can tell. And then I got my Albert salt out, which is kind of a little bit of everything and just evenly seasoned those. Put them face down on your pan. Cook them in your oven for 350 degrees. Now, if you wanted to do it on the barbecue pit, that would work out great too and give it some of that extra smoky flavor. I wanted to do that, but my husband is cooking on it and there's just not enough room on there for these. So I'm going to let these roast in the oven. So next, this recipe says you need 24 slices of bacon. I don't know if there's 24 slices in here, but I'm just going to go ahead and fry this while I'm waiting for my squash to roast in the oven. So I ended up frying that whole entire package of bacon and I crumbled it all up. And that's what I got. There was not 24 slices in there. Our spaghetti squash is done. And you can always tell, ouch, it's still hot. If you go like that, and they are soft, they are done. I'm going to take these and flip them over. 
just got them flipped over. They look beautiful. I'm going to let these cool completely before I touch them again. To the same pan that I did my um, bacon in, I'm going to do four tablespoons of butter. Now I have to add in three small onions, finely sliced. And here's my third one. I'm going to sprinkle it with some of my Cavender seasoning. Mix it all together, get it all kind of nice and coated. Now I'm going to let these cook low and slow and let them get a really good caramelization. Now I have nine cloves of garlic minced up. Um, it sounds like a lot, but that is what the recipe says. So I'm gonna go for it. My onions are still caramelizing, but it says to just add them right in there. Stir these up and just let it caramelize all together. My spaghetti squash is completely cooled off. Look how soft that is. Now you just want to take your fork and just scrape it out. Um, in the recipe, it says to put it into a mixing bowl. And then you're going to add your caramelized onions and the other ingredients in with it and then mix it all in that bowl. But to save a dish, I'm just going to do it all in one pan. Or a Pyrex dish, I should say. Now those of you, if you haven't had spaghetti squash yet, that's why it's called spaghetti squash. It kind of comes out and strings just like that naturally. You don't have to, using the fork does help it. I'm just going to kind of put this in here a little evenly and I'm going to check my onions over here. So while the, um, Onions are still caramelizing. I am going to go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients to this and just kind of let it sit there. Whenever the onions are done, then I'm going to combine it all. I figured I would think smarter, not harder, and just get this part done. Add your bacon. It says four and a half cups of sour cream. This one has been used a little bit, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just put the whole thing in here. So y'all, I got way too ambitious. I cannot mix all of this in my Pyrex. So I'm going to go ahead and add six cups of cheddar cheese. Three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. There wasn't quite three quarters of a cup left in that bag, so I'll just top it off with a little extra. Y'all can see how full my bowl is. I am so glad that I didn't try to finish this in the Pyrex. My onions are pretty much done. I'm going to call it done, and we're going to add those in here. undecided on how I'm going to mix all this together. I think I'm going to try to use my tongs first. It's actually 
actually working pretty well. Move it back a little bit. I think that's mixed together pretty well. Now we're going to put it in our Pyrex dish. working out a lot better. I'm so glad that I did not try to mix all this together in the Pyrex. That could have turned out really bad. <laughs> Now we're going to just smooth it all out. Now we are going to put it in our oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. I just got this out of the oven. Look how good it looks. It's all bubbly. And you know what? I think next time I'm gonna do like a breadcrumb topping on, on top. Let me know what y'all think. I know you do. Look at how cheesy. Okay y'all, this is done. I've got a little piece of bacon. I've got a little bit of everything. Let's taste it and see if we like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Totally a keeper. I will link the recipe down below with a few other links. Uh, we are going to eat dinner. Uh, we are having this, this with pork chops. I think it's going to pair great together. Also, I would put fresh parts parsley or fresh chi chives on the top of this that would be amazing along with like a breadcrumb topping I will do that next time I make this I will catch y'all in the next video um, see what else we can come up with to cook good evening all welcome back tonight we are going to actually be doing a crock pot meal we will be making a like a Mexican style enchilada recipe in my instant pot. This is the recipe we are doing today. It is out of this cookbook. I love it. I will post the link down below for my affiliate account. So I'm doubling all this. 
So we are going to brown the hamburger meat and then add all of this except for the tortillas. Now, I'm going to season my hamburger meat. We're gonna add some cumin. Sprinkle it in there. Okay. Some of that. This is delicious. I am out of chili powder. And this is kind of a good, um, I can't even think today, y'all. A good substitute. It doesn't taste exactly like it, but it's pretty close. A little bit of garlic powder. Whoop, that's enough. Here, hang on. Let's sprinkle it. Some onion powder. Whoa. I'm going to mix all of this stuff together. Stuff. Once again, you know what I mean? With Thanksgiving coming up, y'all, I am going absolutely crazy. <laughs> I have six regular H-E-B buttered tortillas, and I am going to just cut them into strips. Let me see if I can do this. Just like that. So this is what all of our strips look like. About that thick. Well, nobody wants candy in their enchiladas. Now it doesn't say to do this, but I'm going to do this just in case. You want to put that in the bottom of there? There you go. Okay, and then do the next one just like that. Here's one more. And this one. This one down here in the corner. Just like that. We have the strips layered about like that. Well, I shouldn't say layered, but laid out just like that. Now I'm going to add two cans of this. You can use medium or hot, whatever you prefer. Two cans of cream of chicken. Now you could use cream of mushroom. I just kind of thought about that. That's probably what I would have done if I would have thought about that when I was making the grocery list. But this will be good still too. I was also thinking too, instead of making your own um, seasoning for this and just kind of seasoning it with whatever, Get those taco seasoning packs by McCormick, I think is who it is, and those would work great for this. Now I'm adding two cans of ranch style beans. I saw this one with sweet onions and I figured we'd give it a try. It sounded good. Stir these in. Doesn't that look good, y'all? I think this is gonna be delicious. I just, we just had a cold front come in today, so I think this is going to be a good cozy meal to have on this kind of cloudy, cool day. Now we're just going to take our mixture. Let's see if I can do this without getting it all over the place. And just spin it on top of our tortillas. Move the two closer, that should work out better. And we're going to do half of this mixture on top of these. Oh, you know what? I forgot my cheese. I am using sharp cheddar and I am just going to layer it just like that on top. Probably about two and a half handfuls. Now, another layer of our tortillas.
And this says to layer it two times, but I think I'm gonna have more than that, so I'll probably end up doing three layers. Hopefully it fits another layer of cheese. And one more layer of our meat mixture. And then you're gonna end with one last top layer of cheese. So now you're gonna cook it on high for three hours. All right, our enchilada casserole is ready. Look at how beautiful that is. Let's taste it. Okay. Doesn't that look good? All right, let's try it. Mm-hmm. That's really good. I am going to put some salsa or hot sauce on top just to give it a little more um, brightness, a little more freshness. I thought I had cilantro, but we don't, or I would put some of that on there too. We're going to eat dinner. I'll catch y'all next time.